I was born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri, and I grew up singing in choirs, singing in school, and uh, interestingly enough, I had an elementary music teacher who was a great influence on me, and she encouraged me to sing and to play piano and to pursue music. She felt that it was something I was passionate about, and as a kid, I wasn't sure how passionate I was about it, but I did find myself enjoying um, being a singer, enjoying being a piano player. Starting in elementary school, I was involved in the school choir, and I went to a Catholic school, so there was also a church choir, and I had the same director for both of those experiences. So it was really a very consistent pattern for me. Uh, every week, we would have rehearsals in the school and rehearsals uh, in the church choir, and we would have performances, uh, you know, in in church services or recitals or concerts at school, so it kept me very busy. I first got interested in arranging probably when I was about 11 years old. I was singing in my children's choir at church and the one at school, and I would often bring the music home from rehearsals and sit at the piano and practice my part. And quite honestly, it was out of curiosity in which I would begin manipulating pitches, manipulating rhythms, wondering what would this piece sound like if I changed this note to this note or this rhythm to this rhythm. And I would sketch out my ideas on manuscript paper and take them back to my music teacher and show them to her. And I think I was a bit precocious and I would flash the manuscript at her and say, can we try it this way? And sometimes she would, and she would listen to my ideas, and she would encourage me, and she believed that I had some ability, or at least some instincts, toward arranging music for voices in particular. So I continued with that. I think there came a time when I was in high school when I began to realize that music was something that I couldn't do without, specifically choral music. I found myself continuously wanting to be a part of the choral experiences uh, in my church choir, but also part of the experiences in high school, playing for musical productions, uh, accompanying soloists, doing anything that I could in order to continue pursuing a path in music, because at that time I think I knew I wanted to, to do that for a living. There were a number of composers whose music resonated with me. I was studying piano, so I certainly loved the, the sonatas of Beethoven. I loved the music of Chopin. But in particular, uh, as, a, as a young kid, I was learning the music of Robert Ray. And I was studying his gospel mass and uh, learning how to play it. And so that became um, something that I wanted to not only do as a piano player, but maybe one day conduct and maybe one day study with Robert Ray because he was a St. Louis composer. So he was probably one of the first composer, conductor, pianist that uh, I became familiar with growing up in my high school years. After high school, I went to Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio, and pursued a music education degree, studying both piano and voice. And while I was doing that, I was singing in the University Circle Chorale which is a, uh, was a town and gown choir uh, based out of the Cleveland Institute of Music. And I continued singing and studying everything from chant to contemporary music at the time. I was arranging spirituals. One of my first arrangements uh, got performed by the University Circle Chorale under the direction of Gil Brooks. So, that gave me a lot of encouragement and helped me to continue on my path as a music educator but also as an arranger. I entered college wanting to be a music educator specifically so that I could teach children. I wanted to work with elementary children, I wanted to work with middle schoolers, I wanted to work with high schoolers but in particular I think middle school was the age group that really uh, captured me in many ways because I think for me it was a time in which my voice was of course trying to change and I didn't necessarily find myself singing music all the time that resonated with me. There were certainly some composers and arrangers out there that were writing 
great pieces for middle school, but I felt like I wanted to contribute to arranging music even for that particular age group. So middle school was my target. Right out of college, I became a middle school teacher back in my hometown of St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, at Ledoux Middle School. As I was working with them on a repertoire, I would often find myself having to change notes, change rhythms so that the music could be more accessible to them. And so um, I wanted them to be successful. And sometimes the ranges of notes that were on the score in front of them weren't necessarily the notes that they were capable of singing, especially my young male singers. So I think a lot of my arranging instincts um, came from wanting to recreate music, if you will, choral music that would allow my young people, my young singers to, to be successful. While I was working full-time as a teacher, I was also working part-time on my master's degree uh, at the University of Missouri at St. Louis with Robert Ray, who was one of my heroes, and uh, I had an opportunity to study composition and arranging with Robert Ray and I also served as a conducting assistant for the course that he conducted on the campus. So after I finished my master's degree in 1994, I taught for one more year of middle school and then I moved on to Northwestern University to pursue a doctorate in conducting. And again, it was my desire to work with a conductor and teacher and composer, and in this case it was Robert Harris, who uh, at that time was director of choral activities at Northwestern University in uh, suburban Chicago. And so after I um, finished my degree, I continued to work at North Park University for a long time, actually, up until 2009. And in 2009, I made the transition from Chicago to Philadelphia to take a job here. Uh, at Temple University and in the music education and choral departments. It was in 1998 that I received my first publishing contract and actually that was with Plymouth Music, which is now Cola Voce. It was a four-part treble arrangement of My Lord, What a Morning. Also in that same year, I got another publishing contract from a company called Hal Leonard and that was for a piece entitled Everlasting Melody, which is still in my catalog to this day. My relationship with Hal Leonard has been a very delightful one for the past 16 years or so. My first piece, Everlasting Melody, was published in 1999, and it was the first piece on the Henry Leck Creating Artistry series, and I think that particular piece being my first piece with Hal Leonard really opened the door for the possibility of publishing more pieces, particularly for treble voices, young voices, children's voices, unchanged voices. So since then, I, I can't even count the number of publications I have with Hal Leonard now because in addition to writing for the Henry Leck series, I have written for various church series, uh, concert series, I now have my own series with Hal Leonard and G. Shermer. I've written for Music Express magazine. I have written for some of the textbooks that have been published by Hal Leonard in conjunction with uh, McGraw-Hill. So it's been quite a journey. Um, I feel like I've contributed a lot of, of musical thoughts and ideas uh, that have been published by that company and I look forward to more publications ahead.